On this week's joint of the week, we're gonna do the half blind dovetail. This is a great fundamental joint that's used in a lot of drawer construction or anytime you don't want end grain visible on the front of a joint. It is a beautiful joint and it's actually really easy to do. If you can cut a through dovetail, you can certainly cut a half blind dovetail. Uh, we're gonna start with just the half blind dovetail this week and then we're gonna work our way up to inlaid half blind dovetails next week. So. Uh, let's head over to the table saw and I'm going to show you how you get this joint started and then we'll come back to the bench and lay it out. The way a half blind dovetail joint works is you're going to cut tails into the sideboard. For example, if this was a drawer, the reason you would do it that way is because you would pull out on that drawer so you want your tails in your sideboard because that's where the uh, most pressure over time is going to be but you don't go all the way through so you need to decide how far up you want to go and you can see these boards are different thicknesses because our drawer face is typically going to be a lot thicker board than the side material of our drawers so you're going to have to readjust your marking gauge or have two of them but you need to decide how far up you're going to go so this board is about three quarters of an inch and if i was going to split it into two thirds i would do 0.5 and I look at this and I go, ah, yeah, that would be pretty cool, but let's, let's go a little bit further. I think it'll make it look a little bit slicker and cooler from the side. So we're gonna go to 0.6. And so that is going to be how far you're gonna set your marking depth on your tails board. So I've got my marking gauge set to that. And we're going to make our tails here, our tails depth line. And that is also going to be the distance from the inside of your drawer face or your, your mating board that you're going to cut your tails to. So that's a good thing to mark out right now. But there's also another way to do this, which I'll show you at the bench. I'm just gonna do it now. And then you're going to adjust your marking gauge to the depth of your tails, which is going to be the thickness of your sideboard. So then it's always good to label outside and inside when you're doing these, say outside, inside, that's gonna help you keep track of where you're going here. So this is our inside. So this is the depth that we're going to cut down to on our pin side. And now one thing that I like to do, and it's not mandatory, is to cut a rabbit into this board. Because on a half blind dovetail, the only part that is ever gonna be visible of your whole dovetail situation is going to be right here on this face. So if you were to, let's say, have some tear out on the inside of your tails board, that would show. But if you cut a little rabbit, not only does it help you with squareness, it helps you hide any mistakes. And as we all know, we are not perfect woodworkers. We make mistakes and finding ways to hide them is awesome. So I'm gonna cut a very small rabbit into this board. So let's call it a 16th. And I'm just gonna use my calipers here to mark that out. And this is just gonna help me set my saw blade. And then this, you should probably use a flat bottom blade. This isn't a flat bottom blade, but I will use it as a chance to use my rabbiting hand plane, block plane, uh, which I always love an excuse to use. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set my saw blade here. We're gonna use that line we just drew to set the depth. So we've got our depth set and we're gonna go ahead and set the distance we're gonna cut into our board here. And we're gonna do that. And I have a great video called Superior Accuracy in Woodworking or something like that that talks about this technique here, but we're gonna take the tip of the tooth and we're going to just put it right on the line we wanna to cut to. There we go. And then we're gonna put the Cat's Moses No Deflection Stop Block, which if you have pre-ordered that, they should be shipping in a few weeks. I should be getting samples here in a couple weeks of the finished product, which means they will have extruded everything and they're just waiting for final approval on machining. So there's a little update for you. Um, so there we go. So we're perfectly against there. And we're gonna make a few passes and cut our rabbit. I'm going to start with my inside pass closest to my line and go real slow and carefully. And then after that, you can just sort of go nuts so because you know you're not gonna go over your line. So uh, let's do this. And then we'll head back over to the bench and talk about layout. So we're gonna go ahead and just clean up this rabbit really quickly which if you just watched my which hand planes to buy video, you'll know how much I love using this guy. So let's 
set the knicker here and use that to make sure we don't get any tear out here at the end. Perfect. So we're just going to check that rabbit for square. Oh, look at that. Right on the money. And then again, across. Right on the money again. Okay, now let's talk about layout. For layout, as always, uh, I believe that thinner pins look gorgeous. Same thing for half blinds. We're going to make these very thin pins. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a set of dividers or compass, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go an eighth inch in from each side. Just like that. And then I'm going to take them. And I always say this, but it's a good reminder. A good ruler is going to have indents. So you can easily find the locations for your marking gauge or your dividers by just putting it in the indent and sliding till you feel it click. Boom. There we go. We're going to go to five eighths. We're going to start in that little dot we just made an eighth inch away. And we're going to walk our dividers across. Now, people always ask me, like, how do you decide? Well, to be honest, we go a little bit of trial and error. Um, usually I'll do it on a cutoff from the same board so it's the same width and kind of play with it until I find something that looks good. There's no real kind of math to deciding this, but there we go. Those will be where our tails are. Go ahead and mark those out. And again, in that video I linked in the corner earlier for superior accuracy, this technique is talked about also in my comprehensive guide to cutting dovetails. I'd highly recommend you watch that if you're new to dovetails. It just has every trick that I know and have learned over the years. Uh, I just wanted to compile them into one video so we don't keep putting them out all over the place. So we're just gonna mark those out. And there we go. And now we're gonna grab our eight to one Cat's Moses magnetic dovetail jig and cut these out. Now, again, like I said, watch that comprehensive guide to cutting dovetails. And uh, we're gonna breeze right through this because we've done this a lot, but we'll check back in once we've cleared out the waste. So this is where the mentality becomes a little bit different between half blind and regular through dovetails. For half blind, all you're ever going to see is this face. No other part of these will you ever see except for this exact face here. So you want to take special care that you get down to your line here perfectly, but <clears throat> when it comes to back here, nobody cares. So as long as you don't go over your rabbit, it doesn't matter. So what I like to do, the great thing that you saw about this rabbit is that it's a perfect depth line and it's also 90 degrees to your other faces. So what I like to do is before I start working on the face, I'll just give these just a little bit of a cleanup down to the rabbit. And that way I know that I'm not going to blow it out from the front when I start cleaning that up again. It doesn't matter if you bruise your corners a little bit because this is all they're going to see. So then I very carefully come up front and clean these out, taking just half and then half again and then half again until you're down to your line. And there we go. And that should be perfect. There we go. Now I'm going to put this in the vise and just clean out the centers, make sure there's nothing in there that's going to stop us from seating. I got these really cool uh, chisels. They're actually carver's chisels, but they work really good for cleaning the inside of dovetails that are really, really small. Uh, they're really precise and you can kind of like hold on to them so you don't really take anything out. I'll put a link down to the description for them, but they are <laughs> one of those things that you didn't know you needed until you had them and they are really, really helpful. And they just help you get just the little stuff out of the middle. Now, I always recommend working from your show face back when you're doing final cleanup. That way, if anything happens, it's on the side that nobody's ever going to see. So I'm just going to get these cleaned out. And you can even like 
you know, dig these out more than you would think. Uh, you need to just because again, they're not going to show. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my dovetail alignment board, which is really helpful for marking out. I sell a version I make on the CNC on my website. Uh, that's linked below as well. We're going to go ahead and put this in the vise and start marking these out. And one of the great things again about this rabbit, another thing I've said a whole bunch of times is that it helps you with marking out an alignment because it seats perfectly with your board. So you just press it down into, and you don't have to line it up yet. You just want your pin board pressed up against the fence of your dovetail alignment board. You just press it down until you feel it go flat and then you just lock it into your vise. Then you push your tailboard up against the fence, making sure everything's seating right. If you don't have a dovetail alignment board, I recommend just taking a square or ruler and making sure that those are flush. And then very carefully, you wanna mark out. You can do a light mark all the way through, but um, I would recommend just trying to get to your depth line and you should have already marked this out with your marking gauge, but you could also if you didn't mark out the top of your tails as well, but we already did with our marking gauge, so that's not necessary. Okay, now here is where marking out gets a little different than dovetails. So what you can do, slide your square over to your line and mark down to your depth gauge. And that's gonna give you a great guide for your saw and your chisels. And I'm doing this backwards for your guys' benefits, so. I hope you appreciate that. Now we're gonna cut out our pins, but here's something if you're using a jig, uh, any jig for that matter, not just mine, is that of course all saws have tooth set, which means the tooth sticks out further than the saw. So if you were to use this to cut the pins, it would perfectly line up, no problem, but you're gonna be dragging your teeth across the face of your jig, which is going to scratch it up. Um, and that would happen to any guide you are using. So there's a couple of solutions here. One, you can cut it out by hand and just, you know, stay further away from your line than you normally would. Or you can use uh, either blue tape or there's this really cool stuff called UHMW. It's made out of the same stuff that the white cutting boards are made out of. And it's clear and it's super anti-friction. It's super slick. I'm gonna put this on my jig. We're gonna do both. We're gonna cut it out by hand and we're gonna use the tape uh, just so we can try both. But again, all that matters is that top face. So as long as you stay away from your line there and chisel to it last, you will be fine, I promise. Now, when we make these cuts, because we're not cutting all the way through, you can only cut to the top corner and the bottom corner. So you're essentially gonna be cutting at like an angle like this, and you need to stop when you get to those corners, and then everything's gonna have to be cleared out with something other than a saw. So just make sure you don't go past either one of your marking gauge lines, and then I'll show you how to clear it out here at the end. Okay, so now we have our pins cut the best we can with that angle. Uh, I found that using the jig to get the curve started and then sort of taking it away and working my way just down, up, down, up really helped. Um, but this is such a small kerf that, you know, I really recommend that you just use the jig to get it started and then use your eye and you can chisel down to it later. So we need to clear out this waste. There's several ways you could do it. Matt Cremona, I've seen do it with a Forstner bit, uh, clear out a lot of the waste and then do the rest with a chisel. Um, I think we're gonna do the whole thing with a chisel because that's just gonna be a little bit easier given the size of these. So we're gonna start on the back face uh, because this is the most important. We'll do this line after we've cleared out a lot of waste. That way it doesn't screw up our depth gauge. So we're gonna start on this side here. Here's a good little tip here if you haven't already, especially when you're looking at a board from this way, it's almost impossible to tell which is your waste and which isn't. So make sure you just Mark your waist out so you don't chisel the wrong piece out. And then we're gonna go ahead and start chiseling. Guys, one of the things to think about is never put your hand in front of a chisel. I know it feels like you wanna hold this down and dig this out, but uh, I have stuck my hand with a chisel too many times to let you do that, so be careful. One of the things I'm gonna do to make sure this is safer is just clamp it to my bench. That way I don't need to get in front of it. And then I'm just gonna start digging out material here. One of the things you can do, a great little trick I used to use, is you can use a piece of wood as a 90 degree guide. But again, this is the inside, doesn't really matter. This will be 
all covered by the rabbit. You'll never, ever, ever see this. So alternate between chopping down and chopping out. If you're having any trouble fitting your piece, you can easily dig out where you think it is. So if you go to set your piece and it's not going down, you can easily dig out just the middle of your pin section, no problem. So uh, again, because these aren't seen, if you're having any trouble fitting, just wherever you think that is, you just can dig that area out. One of the things you can do for glue up that will help you with getting it to seat, and again, be real careful, use your fingers as a brake here, but you can just take in the inside corners, make sure you're on the rabbit side of your dovetails. You can just take those in, just chamfer them just a little bit, and that will help you get it to seat, just like that. Now, because this wall's so thin and I've had it happen before, I'm going to clamp a sacrificial board back here just so that when I hammer this home, it doesn't blow apart. It's not mandatory, but just take it from a guy who's had these things blow out before. All right, guys, well, that came out great. This is a utilitarian joint. One thing to know is I did misspeak when I was setting the depth line in the walnut for my maple. I measured the thickness of the board when really I should have measured the thickness of the board after the rabbit. So small mistake, it was so thin, it was 16th of an inch. It just took me an extra minute to take that off with a hand plane. But honestly, this came out absolutely gorgeous and I'm really excited next week, we're gonna do inlaid half blind dovetails, which is really exciting. So we'll see you next week on Joining the Week. If you're new here, please subscribe. We'd love to have you. Thanks so much for watching guys. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day.